Hi, Dennis Beatty here with another quick Elixir tip. I recently built a recurring report that required matching a bunch of data from an external API with records in the local database. And so I just wanted to show you a quick, easy way to do that. Let's say your external API returns a response that looks something like this. So you have some JSON with the list of transactions, and then each of those has an amount, an ID, and a user ID. And let's say that you are tasked with matching those up with users in your database and generating a report that has an amount and the user's first name and last name. Let's say that the users in your database look something like this. So if we say repo.all user, you'll see we have this list of user structs. Each of them has an ID that corresponds with the IDs from the external API. And then we have a first name and last name there. And so basically we're going to want to pair those up so that, so that we can generate that report. Now, the first thing we'll want to do is pull the transactions list out of that JSON response. So we just say transactions equals response transactions. Okay, so now we have that. A fairly simple solution would be um, to just use enum.map, right? So we'll map over the list of transactions. And then for each transaction, we're going to um, get the user from the database. So we'll just do repo.get and with the user, and then we'll get the user ID from the transaction. And so now we have our user. And so then we'll just return with the amount is the transaction amount. And then the user is going to be the user dot first name and then a space and then user dot last name. And there we have it. Fairly simple solution. Let's make sure it works. Okay. And so we got the amounts for each of the transactions and the user that initiated that transaction. But you'll notice here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six database queries that are getting run. So this gets the job done, but you're gonna be running a database query for every transaction that gets returned. That's not a huge deal if there's only six transactions uh, like this example, but if you've got 10,000 transactions or if you're running this uh, really frequently, your database isn't gonna be. Let's instead load all the users so if we say users equals repo dot all user, then we get our list of users. And so then when we do our enum.map over the transactions, we can instead say user equals enum.find from our users and then get the user where the ID matches the user ID from that transaction. And so then we'll do the same thing as before, where we say the amount is the transaction amount. And then the user is user.first name, and then a space, and then user.last name. Whoops, I needed to end that string. And then close that. Okay, so now you'll see we don't have the query happening for every single one of those transactions. Instead, we just had the one query that happened at the beginning, and then we're able to find those in memory. And so instead of having to make all of those network trips, we're only making the one network request, and then the rest of it is happening in memory. And so this is going to go quite a bit faster. The one thing though, is you'll notice that in terms of big O complexity, we're looking at quadratic complexity because we are having to do this enum.map over the list of transactions, and then we're using enum.find, which because this is a linked list, it's having to check every single node to see if the ID matches that user ID. So we're having to do one operation for every transaction, but then for every transaction, we also have to do one operation for every user, which makes it quadratic. There's a way that we can do this instead that will use linear time. And that will be by changing this user find and making that constant. If you've ever used enum.map over a map, you'll notice something interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and I'm gonna create a map and I'll just say name is Dennis, state is Utah. And so now if I do enum.map over this map and then I just inspect what's given to me, you'll see something interesting. This comes in as tuples. So we have a tuple with the string 
for the key and a string for the value. If we take the result of this and pass this into enum.into, say enum.into with v, and so v in IEX will get the last value. And then we can say we want it to be into a map. And so this is going to convert this list of tuples into a map and put it kind of back the way it was. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take advantage of that. Ecto's select macro will allow you to get records from a database formatted in whatever way you choose, whether that be a list of structs, list of strings, list of lists, a list of custom maps, or what we want to do, which is a list of tuples. Because you want to search the user records by their user ID, you're going to want a map with user IDs as keys and user records as values. So in order to do that, we're going to select our records into a list of tuples and then convert that list. So instead of getting our users using just a normal repo.all, what we can do is we can say users equals, and so we'll take the user model and we'll pass it into select. U is gonna be our binding to the user object. Or, and so we'll say we want the user ID as our key, and then we want the user as the value. And then we're going to say, um, we want to get all of them from our repo. And then we're going to pass that into enum.into and say we want it in a map. And so what you'll see here is we've now selected from the database, we've got this new map that has our keys are the user IDs and then the values are the user itself. So now if I say I want users four, that lets me select the user with ID four. This probably won't make a huge difference when you're working with small data sets, but it's good to keep this trick in mind to keep your function from becoming a bottleneck when your lists get a little bit longer. Using this and following up, we'll write our function again. So if we do enum.map transactions, and then function on the transaction, we'll say user equals map.get users using the transactions user ID. And then we'll put that in again so that we have the amount and the user will be user.firstname, whoops, in the space, user.lastname. And there you have it. So now we are able to get all of those users match them up. And because of the way we're doing this, we still have linear time because we're going over every single transaction, but our lookup is now theoretically in constant time, which makes it so that the entire function is running in linear time. So as always, let me know what you think of this post. Do you know a better way to do this? Would you like to see more tips like this? Let me know on Twitter. And thanks again to everyone who's already subscribed on YouTube and followed me on Twitter. If you haven't, it's the easiest way to see when I have a new post up. So please like this video on YouTube and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.